Mr. Jackson is recognized for 60 minutes as a designee of the minority leader. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend the remarks and include any extraneous materials on the subject of the special order. It is with great honor that I rise today to co-anchor the CBC special hour. Sorry? Without objection, Mr. Jackson. Now you can go ahead. Thank you, sir. It is with great honor that I rise today to co-anchor this CBC special hour, along with my distinguished colleague, Representative Sheila Surflores McCormick. For the next 60 minutes, members of the CBC will spotlight Caribbean American Heritage Month, a celebration of the significant impact Caribbean Americans have made in shaping our nation. This occasion isn't just important to the CBC, Congress, and our constituents, but it resonates deeply with all Americans. It is time to appreciate the enduring spirit of Caribbean Americans who influence spans across arts, sciences, politics, and entrepreneurship. We aim to heighten cultural awareness, honor the diverse Caribbean cultures, and acknowledge their ongoing contributions. Ultimately, Caribbean Her American Heritage Month reflects a vital piece of the American narrative that deserves recognition and understanding for all, for all citizens. I now yield my time to the Honorable Chairman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Honorable Stephen Horsford. I thank the gentleman, uh, the Congressman uh, Mr. Jackson from Illinois and Congresswoman Sheila Sherfilis uh, McCormick and for their leadership for co-chairing tonight's special order hour. I rise today with my colleagues of the Congressional Black Caucus in commemoration of Caribbean Heritage Month. As we mark the 17th anniversary of Caribbean Heritage Month, I'd like to pay a special thanks to Congresswoman Barbara Lee, who led the effort in Congress to designate the month of June as Caribbean Heritage Month to make sure that we always honor the rich history and contributions of Caribbean Americans. As a point of personal pride, I am a, a son and a grandson of Caribbean immigrants. My mother and grandmother came to the United States uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. And for me to now serve in this body, to be able to represent the needs of my constituents and those of Caribbean heritage, it gives me great pride. And it also reminds me of the great contributions, uh, the curry chicken and the hot pepper sauce, uh, the pelau, and so many other wonderful uh, dishes that I have experienced growing up in my own household based on my Caribbean heritage. And the fact that Caribbeans contribute so much uh, and have contributed so much to the uh, foundation of this country and its success. This month, we are proud to recognize the millions of Caribbean Americans around our nation who contribute every day to the fabric of our society in the arts, sciences, in business, in sports, in education, in government, and those who serve in our military. Those who have made our country better with their gifts and their service, like our very own Vice President Kamala Harris. Others, like W.E.B. Du Bois, Secretary of State Colin Powell, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Grace Jones, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, Marcus Garvey, Usain Bolt, Sidney Poitier, and Harry Belafonte, to name just a few. The Congressional Black Caucus, the conscience of the Congress, has been home to many Caribbean American trailblazers since our founding in 1971. Trailblazers like Shirley Chisholm, a Caribbean American and founding member of the Congressional Black Caucus, who became the first black woman to be elected to the U.S. Congress and the first woman and African American to seek the nomination for President of the United States from one of our two major political parties. Many of our members in Congress today are of 
the Caribbean descent, including Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Congresswoman Yvette Clark, Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett, and our special order hour co-chair, Congresswoman Sheila Sherfilis McCormick. Now more than 50 years after our founding, our members have continued to shape consequential legislation, from voting rights to civil rights, fair housing, and so much more. Carrying in the tradition of Shirley Chisholm, who sought to make America live up to its promise that all are created equal, to challenge the idea of what was possible for black Americans and ensure a future worthy of our struggle. This month and every month, the Congressional Black Caucus is proud to honor the unique and diverse cultures, languages, religions, art, literature, music, and cuisines from around the Caribbean diaspora because our nation's diversity is our greatest strength. I'm honored to join with my colleagues tonight. I want to thank our co-chairs and, most importantly, our constituents who work so hard to contribute to this great nation and to make it continue to live up to its promise. And with that, I yield back. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to recognize the Honorable Congresswoman Yvette Clark from New York State. I would like to yield back my time to the Honorable Congresswoman Yvette Clark from New York State, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my good friend and colleague Jonathan for uh, Representative, excuse me, Representative Jonathan Jackson for yielding some time uh, in commemoration of Caribbean American Heritage Month. Mr. Speaker, I rise this evening in commemoration and celebration of the designation of Caribbean American Heritage Month during this month of June. I add my voice to those who have lauded Congresswoman Barbara Lee for her leadership in ensuring 17 years ago this designation. It's with an immense sense of pride in this special moment in the lives of those of us in communities across the nation of Caribbean descent. For nearly two decades, this month has served as a cherished opportunity to honor the boundless contributions of Caribbean Americans to our nation. From grassroots activists, the first black woman to run for president, the Honorable Shirley Chisholm, the first female vice president, the Honorable Kamala Harris, to, to thought leaders, entertainers, entrepreneurs, diplomats, business moguls, Michelin star chefs, and the brave, highly decorated members of our military, Caribbean Americans compose an integral part of our nation's legacy, fabric, and future. It is indeed the honor of my life and the dream of my ancestors to be a woman of Jamaican descent representing my home, my community, the place where I was born and raised, and to carry the torch of my people in the United States Congress. As we acknowledge the excellence and contributions of Caribbean Americans, let this month remain a beacon for uplifting diversity, the preservation of legacy, the strength of unity, and the undeniable truth that we, the descendants of Caribbean peoples, are a force to be reckoned with and our culture and contributions deserve every acknowledgement and all the appreciation of a grateful nation. From Jamaica to Barbados and everyone and every nation in between, bless up, one love, walk good. Thank you and I yield back. I would like to thank the Honorable Congresswoman Yvette Clark I would like now to yield to my colleague, the Honorable Sheila Sherfilis McCormick from Florida. 
Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here to celebrate our Caribbean Heritage Month. It's also an honor to be here co-anchoring with Jonathan Jackson from Illinois. And I wanna say a very special thank you to our chairman for allowing us to be here and speak about all the accomplishments of Caribbean Americans. As both the first Haitian American Democrat elected to Congress and a permanent member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, I'm firmly committed to supporting strong US Caribbean ties. But we cannot forget the success of this global partnership depends directly on Haiti's prosperity and its ability to triumph in the face of challenges. Today, Haiti has found itself engulfed in chaos. The stability of the country and the preservation of its democracy institutions must, be, must, must remain paramount of importance to the United States. Last week, Guyana and the Dominican Republic issued a joint declaration emphasizing their commitment to enhancing bilateral relationships between their two countries. The re reiteration of their commitment to address pressing challenges such as food, secured, food insecurity, Energy security and climate change is inspirational, and as the United States, we must be doing the same. Both nations reaffirm that Haiti is an important member of the Caribbean family of nations. They pledge their full support to their governments towards the achievement of political stability in Haiti. The regional commitment is to be applauded and, and, and continued. The ongoing situation in Haiti is far too unstable and recognition of the world stage is vital as we work to bring an end to this crisis. It pains me to see Haiti in these times of struggle. The country now finds itself at one of the lowest points in its history, battling a surge of gang violence. Public health challenges along with catastrophic hunger, stroke, flames, the instability. As a neighbor, we have a responsibility to address the situation and respond accordingly. I'm pleased that, the pres that President Biden nominated Dennis Hankins, foreign policy advisor to the National Guard Bureau, to serve as the U.S. ambassador to Haiti. This nomination demonstrates the Biden-Harris administration's recognizing America's role as an ally of Haiti to re respond to the volatility of the situation today. Throughout the Caribbean American Heritage Month, we must continue to recognize the challenges that Haiti is currently gra grappling with and where our nation can lead and support these efforts. I'd like to yield back to my co-anchor. Thank you, the Honorable Sheila Sir Lewis McCormick. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to join with my colleagues in recognizing and giving special commendation to Caribbean American Heritage Month from Shirley Chisholm to Malcolm X to Congresswoman Yvette Clark to Congresswoman Sheila Surflis McCormick to the great W.E.B. Du Bois to CBC Chair Mr. Stephen Horsford, Sheila Jackson Lee, from the founder of the city of Chicago, Jean Baptiste de Sabo, to the great, great general in Haiti, Toussaint Le Overture. Here we are, people who come to this country from the Caribbean have helped to make America more vibrant and successful. This is because Caribbean Americans are some of the most creative and hardworking people in the world. This cannot be debated and most certainly cannot be denied. But it's really the power of the Caribbean egalitarian spirit that has really helped to make America a better place. People who come from the Caribbean are raised in cultures that believe in family and faith and that they believe that all men and women are truly created equal. Because of the deep moral values at work in Caribbean culture, people who hail from this part of the world fundamentally believe that we are all of God's children and that all of us deserve dignity and respect. And this drive for excellence and the commitment to human dignity has continually given rise to some of the most extraordinary individuals, each of them adding to the possibilities of America, and all of them expanding the reach of freedom and democracy in this remarkable country. This is why I'm so glad that in 2005, this body passed the legislation to officially make June Caribbean American Heritage Month. When this body passed that legislation, it gave recognition to people to too long had been overlooked. But today we are righting that wrong. We are correcting the account, as it were, and this is important because I believe that every community should be celebrated. Every heritage should be venerated and given the dignity that it deserves. Perhaps somebody needs to remind the governor of Florida 
that when we celebrate the heritage of other people, we are in fact celebrating ourselves. Somebody needs to remind the governor of Florida that this country has relied on the diversity of its citizens in order to become the nation we are today. Somebody needs to remind him that the difference does not mean deficient. It took a Caribbean American to lead the U.S. military to victory in the Iraq war in the name of Colin Powell. It was a Caribbean American that created a national banking system in this country by creating the Federal Reserve. It was a Caribbean American who made his home in Harlem and preached with such intensity and integrity that he gave African Americans the courage to be themselves. America is a garden comprised of many flowers, all of them complicated and all of them beautiful in their own way. The texture, the colors, the sizes may be different, but the radiance remains the same. And no matter what white supremacy may try to say, the brightness of America is the consequence of multiplicity of colors. We may speak different languages, we may come from different places, and we may eat different foods, but we are all mortal. We are all dependent upon that of clean air, clean water. We all desire to be loved, and we all want the best for our children. And if we do not learn how to live together as brothers and sisters, then we shall surely perish together as fools. When we celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month, it is a veneration of the important, the ongoing contribution of these significant Americans. It is by no means a denigration of anyone else. While it is true that we are all Americans, it is no less the case, however, that each of us brings something different to America. And the capacity for difference is the things that makes America successful and strong. What would this country be without Earl Graves and the great Harry Belafonte? What would this country be like without Beyonce or Eric Holder, Cicely Tyson, Alicia Keys, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and Mr. Sidney Poitier? All of them are descendants of the people who came to this country from the Caribbean. Caribbean Americans have shaped this nation's culture and political direction since its founding and thank God for it. And let us never forget that those who live in the U.S. Virgin Islands, we also honor the Honorable Congresswoman Stacey Plackett. These are citizens of the United States. Yes, those in the Virgin Islands are citizens of America. They are part of our country. They are a part of who we are. And they are no less helping to shape what we hope to become. They too sing America. They too desire to flourish. They too deserve the benefits of democracy. As such as anybody born in Boston or Atlanta or as much as anyone living in Dallas or Little Rock, American citizens who live in the Virgin Islands are no less a part of who we are. They are a part of the American story. And the notes they bring to this concert of opportunity make the music sweet and worthy of our listening ears. I would invite my colleagues and Americans more generally to spend time in conversation with Caribbean Americans. And when you do, you will discover that the love they have for this country, in spite of its tortured history with the people from the Caribbean, is a remarkable manifestation of both courage and patriotism. In spite of this country's morbid preoccupation with racism and white supremacy, Americans of Caribbean descent have time and time again took their place in the dark shadows of war in order to fight for our nation's freedom. And today, we remember them. We speak well of their names. We give honor to those among them who died to make us free. How dare we not honor them? How dare we not sing their praises? As the Bible says, these are they that have come through the great tribulation have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. They are all important to the fabric of this country as those who came from Europe and other places around the world. Therefore, it is altogether fitting that we enshrine their greatness and celebrate their heritage without restraint. I would like to yield my time to my colleague, the Honorable Sheila Surflewis McCormick from Florida. Thank you so much, Representative Jackson. 
I rise today to recognize the invaluable contributions of the South Florida Car Caribbean American community as we celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month. This month provides us with a valuable opportunity to honor the rich culture and heritage and the remarkable accomplishments of the Caribbean Americans, particularly in South Florida. The Caribbean American community has played a significant role in shaping South Florida's identity. Today, the, greatest, the greater Fort Lauderdale metropolitan area has one of the largest Caribbean migrant populations nationwide. South Florida is home to immigrants from many Caribbean countries, including Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Dominica, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, amongst others. The vibrancy of the Caribbean culture touches every part of our region. We see it in action at spaces like Island Space Caribbean Museum Implantation, which elevates the profile of Caribbean art, history, culture throughout South Florida, and the broader diaspora. We can taste in the restaurants that dot our streets corners, serving soul-warming jerk chicken and oxtail, grill, lumbi, and all types of delectable items that we find and remind us of our childhood kitchen tables. The Caribbean American community has long been an integral part of our economic fabric of South Florida, contributing to its prosperity. Caribbean Americans have opened their own businesses and created jobs, making South Florida a vibrant and thriving region. During this month, month we, must, we must recognize challenges currently faced by Florida's Caribbean American community. Governor Ron DeSantis recently signed into law a cruel immigration law that pushes the American dream further out of reach for Floridian, for Floridian immigrant communities. For immigrants seeking a better life in Florida, many of whom who've come to the U.S. for economic opportunities and fleeing violence, this law is most certainly a slap in their face. As we celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month, let us always treat Americans with dignity and with the, with the dignity they deserve and welcome them. Together, let us reaffirm our commitment to recognizing the immense and continued contribution of the Caribbean American community. With that, I yield back to my honorable co-anchor. Thank you, the Honorable Sheila Surflewis McCormick. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to shine a light on an often overlooked chapter of our great nation's history. As we gather here in the heart of our republic, it is important to acknowledge that the very fabric of our nation was woven not only with the thread of our own courage and determination, but also with the substantial contributions of our neighbors. In this special order hour, I wish to recognize the invaluable contributions of the Caribbean, particularly Haiti, in my remarks at this time in shaping American history. During the tumultuous years of the American Revolution, while our forefathers were drafting the blueprints of this great nation, Haiti, known then as French Santo Domingo, was one of the wealthiest colonies in the world. It was the jewel of the French Empire, a beacon of economic prosperity in the region. Their wealth, however, was built on the grim reality of a brutal slave society. This prosperous colony was our silent partner in the fight for independence. The French, in a bid to safeguard St. Dominican from British capture, provided considerable support to the American cause to the tune of better than $9 billion in current U.S. dollars. This financial assistance was a decisive factor in our victory in the Revolutionary War. But it wasn't just monetary aid that the Haitian community provided America in its founding. Over 500 Haitians, free men of color, fought shoulder to shoulder with American colonists and French troops in pivotal battles such as the Battle of Savannah in 1779. The colony was also served as a vital transit point for arms, gunpowder, and supplies from France a lifeline that often made the difference between victory and defeat. The ironies, ladies and gentlemen, is palpable. The fight for freedom in our own land was bolstered by a colony built on the brutal enslavements of individuals. These individuals later led a successful revolution of their own, resulting in Haiti becoming the second American nation to declare independence 
1804. Despite the early recognition and support from the United States, the Jefferson administration banned trade with the newly independent Haiti in 1806, a decision that greatly hindered Haiti's economic prospects. In light of recent crisis in Haiti, I urge you to remember this is intertwined history. Our fight for independence was supported in part by Haiti's resources and its people and their courage. We have a historical debt to Haiti, a moral obligation to assist in Haiti's recovery and long-term prospect. Haiti does not come to us as a debtor. We are in fact a debtor to Haiti. Haiti is our creditor, having helped create our independence. As we navigate the labyrinth of our complex relations with the Caribbean, let us not forget the sacrifices made and the solidarity demonstrated by our Haitian brethren. In acknowledging this, we do not merely pay tribute to our shared past, but also set the stage for a future defined by mutual respect and collaboration. Mr. Speaker, I would like to yield my time to the Honorable Sheila Surfless McCormick for a speech to give. Thank you. Thank you. I rise today as we recognize Caribbean American Heritage Month, I rise today to express my strong support for the Haiti Criminal Collusion Transparency Act. This bipartisan and bicameral legislation is an important step in holding accountable those who have fueled violence in Haiti, and it sends a clear message that America and Americans stand with the Haitian people. This bill, which I am proud to co-sponsor with several of my colleagues on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, would ensure the Secretary of State sanctions Haiti's economic and political elites who regularly use gangs as levers of power. This legislative body would, re would receive regular reports on the nature of the relationship between Haiti's corrupt elite and the heinous gangs that they've colluded with. Recent headlines underscore just how grim the situation in Haiti has grown. As a result of the worsening gang violence, Haitians are now taking matters into their own hands. Many have turned to vigilante justice, using makeshift weapons to root out suspected gang members. At least 160 suspected gang members were killed between April 24th and May 24th. This is no means a viable or a safe long-term solution to gang violence. Vigilante justice leaves open the potential for innocent individuals to be wrongfully characterized as criminals. Haiti's government must be equipped to deal with this region of terror on its own, without depending on its citizens to take up arms. The, Haitian, the Haiti Criminal Collusion Act, which has been endorsed by the National Haitian American elected officials here in the United States, is desperately needed and a legislative solution that can assist our brothers and sisters in Haiti. By shining a spotlight on bad actors and imposing sanctions on worse offenders, the United States is sending a clear signal that it will not tolerate individuals who exploit their positions of power for personal gain, and that they will not tolerate individuals who terrorize the Haitian people. As we begin Caribbean American Heritage Month, I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this legislation. I yield back to my co-anchor and thank you again, co-anchor Jonathan Jackson from Illinois. Thank you, Congresswoman Sheila Surplus McCormick. Mr. Speaker, you've heard from my distinguished colleagues about our interest in celebrating the Caribbean Heritage Month. All issues of great importance to the Congressional Black Caucus, our constituents, Congress and all Americans tonight. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Does the gentleman have yes. a motion? Uh, motion to adjourn. The question is on.